This is the Mile High Five podcast with Carl Jensen and Doug Cunnington. We have authentic conversations about the journey to Phi, health, happiness, and some very odd tangents. We interview Phi experts, side hustlers, people on their way to Phi, and those who have reached the other side. Join us every week, and if you want the show notes and links and all that other stuff, head over to milehighfi.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Mile High Fi podcast. My name is Doug Cunnington, and I have a special guest today. Carl's not around, so Amberly Grant is hanging out with me today. How are you doing today? I am excellent. It's uh, good to catch up with you. And for the people that don't know you, can you give a, a quick intro about yourself? And then you can mention Fin Talks here. I think that a lot of people know you from Fin Talks. Yeah. Okay. I'm Amberly Grant. I do educational, financial educational content online. I also run in-person little retreats in Denver, Colorado. So we're doing our second retreat this year in July uh, as well. So it's like for financial people who are interested in finances. And then I also run a Tuesday meetup for 40 to 50 people online called Fin Talks. And it's every week, every Tuesday at 5.30 Mountain Time. And we talk about different financial topics. So I get to choose those topics. Um, I love it when we have presenters. We had an FBI agent on once talking about data security. So we just have all different types of things that we talk about as a group um, and love newcomers. Awesome. And we'll put a link to that so people can get to it. I am curious. How many people are coming to the retreat in July? What's going on with that? Yeah, we have 43 people signed up. Very cool. Is that at the maximum or is there, are there still seats? Oh, well, there are seats for people who want to either. So, so what I did last year, and I kind of shot myself in the foot, but essentially I found everyone free lodging. So it was 25 people last year, and I found every single person free lodging in Denver. Um, so you could spend the weekend. It was really cheap. So this year I've been trying to do that. So other than the people who are staying at my Airbnb who had very specific, you know, they wanted their own room close to the event, da, da, da. Uh, so they're paying, but everyone else is donation based. So if you are staying at someone local in town, you just donate for the weekend so that they can pay for their toilet paper and extra utilities that you're using and also the inconvenience of having you there. Um, hosts get into the event for free. Uh, people who are not hosting pay. It's quite cheap. It's only $125 this year. Um, and yeah, it's all around Denver. So we have a Friday night meet and greet. Saturday morning, you get to go and do the botanical gardens or an escape room or whatever you want uh, with 40 other financial people. Uh, Saturday night, we have presentations, 10 to 15 minute presentations and talks at MMM HQ. So in Longmont, uh, where we all carpool up there. And then Saturday, uh, Sunday morning is a workout at Red Rock. So we have a personal trainer who's going to work us all out and get that booze out of our system. And wow. then uh, we are going to go and to cideries and um, breweries in downtown Denver for the rest of the afternoon as people hop on the train to fly out. That's fun. Very cool. Yeah. So we'll, we'll link up to that so people can find that too if they happen to be interested. Today, yeah. the topic is journaling. And I... I have like some ups and downs with uh, journaling. I don't have a specific practice, but we'll talk about it a little bit. And uh, Amberly, it sounds like you, you're you a pretty heavy journaler, right? Yeah, I'm really embarrassed of the journals that I found from when I was 18 years old. <laughs> okay. Well, and are you, um, are you someone that sort of like writes naturally? Are you like a quote natural writer? Is that kind of a medium that you're comfortable with just generally? Yeah, as people who are watching the video can see, I just have a blank piece of paper in front of me and I just like to write notes all the time. I have like literally just like journals everywhere. Um, so yes, yeah. It's kind of funny. Like I literally have the same like sh sheet. Uh, again, people, they can't see it, but I have like, it's scrap paper, right? And yeah. I just write on the back of that. And then I also have, I have like a bigger journal right here. As I say, like journals are up and down. And then I have a small pocket journal in my pocket, literally, in case I think of something while I'm walking around. Do you have a small one too? Do you have a, I have, do you have a small pen for your small journal? Because the pen is the problem. <laughs> yes. Get these pens. That, that looks pretty good. I just, I typically use a Pilot G2 and yeah. then it actually fits in my, I wear like okay. pants with cargo pockets all the time. So it's yeah. kind of easy. 
It's not stylish. You're also a guy. Yeah. Like pockets for women don't exist, right? So I need these mini pens to be able to hold anything. That's pretty cool. So journaling and yeah, when did you start journaling? Do you remember like the first one where you were like a kid, like 10 or 12 when you were like, I have a journal or was it later? Yeah, actually, thanks for reminding me because I was like thinking, oh, it's probably when I was 18. But I've always been a writer. Like I, I wrote poems when I was young. I always wrote short stories, um, just something that like that's how I expressed myself. And I remember now that I used to have those journals with the little clasp and the little lock and you had to have the little key. Um, I was also engineering in my head, so I always found ways to like, oh, how does this block work? And that was really fascinating to me about that journal. But I've always had something I've written in. I don't actually I don't know where those are. Um, the one thing for me is I've never been consistent with journaling. So, um, so I did that when I was really young, probably seven to 10 years old. Then, um, I know when I moved from Canada to Los Angeles, I started journaling then and I journaled religiously for years. Like I have stacks and stacks of journals and I not regret stopping, but I, kind of forget all the small little life moments um, that would have been really interesting to look back on all the red rock shows and things like that, that I haven't put in there. But yeah, I, every vacation I go on, I bring a journal and I talk about my vacation on a day to by day basis or a bike trip. Yeah. I'm always writing. Do you have a specific format or did you just free write or has it shifted over time? shifted over time. So when I was younger, um, it would be my downtime and I don't really have a lot of downtime right now. So what I would do specifically when I was lived in Los Angeles, I lived in a, um, an apartment building and it had a pool and I would go down to the pool and I would write in my journal at the pool for like 30 minutes a day. And then I would write at night. So I always found too, when I got partners and, you know, we ended up sharing a bed, I didn't, I don't write when I, I'm going to bed. And that's what I used to do is every time when I'm single, that's at night, I would spend about 30 minutes writing. I also shifted at one point in uh, 2011, I started doing where they, so, so the method there would just be like date and then just kind of going through what I went through the day. I'm not very good with feelings. So I realize a lot of it's just more what's going on, not how I'm feeling about it. And that's okay. Uh, But in 2011, I learned about morning journaling where you just let your thoughts flow. And so I did that for like a couple of months where you just wake up and you don't put dates, you don't, there's no rhyme or reason to what you're doing. You just write like three pages and you have to get to three pages. And when you're done, you just put the pen down and walk away. And that was a really fascinating practice and looks totally different than nighttime journaling. What, um, yeah, what did you get out of that? Like, what did you find after? whatever, a few weeks of doing it once you got used to the routine. Uh, It's cathartic, I think is the right word. Hopefully I have the definition correctly, where I felt like I was able to start the day, almost like we talked about this a bit, meditation, right? Where you have this mini meditation and you can do it for a couple minutes a day. Um, It almost grounds me in what is actually present in my life versus what is just the, the ongoings of a crazy monkey mind. And so that was kind of the the purpose for it. And maybe that's why I don't like meditation because it's not an active practice for me in the way that I feel comfortable. But journaling was, I could just almost restart my day into knowing what was important and what was real versus mm-hmm. not. So for me, like I, I kind of got started, I think maybe in like the 2013, 2014 timeframe and I mm-hmm. want to say, I, I think it was the maybe five minute journal. I think that's it. Yeah. And it's kind of a format. I, I can't remember exactly like things you're happy about thing, like good things and some other, uh, you, do you remember anything else in the five minute journal? I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember this one. Okay. So it's a, it's a little format and there's a few others, like you men, mentioned, um, well, yeah, there's a few other formats, but some of it is um, like maybe affirmation kind of based. Some of it might be um, like things you're grateful for. So you're like thinking yep. about like positive things versus waking up, checking, you know, Instagram or other social media. And then you just like lose, you know, 30 minutes of your life, with some kind of nonsense. And 
I kind of, I lost steam with that specific format. I found there was a lot of like repetition and I, I was mm-hmm. like, okay, like, I think I got out of this, what I, what I needed to. And more recently I've done kind of just like the, the free writing. I don't try to hit a certain amount or mm-hmm. a certain length, but you know, maybe a few minutes until like, like I'm, I'm done writing for that time frame. And yeah. I found that pretty good. You know, sometimes if I'm maybe a little stressed out and I have a lot of things to work on, it's just like a brain dump and you see it written out and you're like, oh, that's actually, that's not that bad. Like, this is totally fine. I don't know why I got so overwhelmed with a handful of things. So Mm -hmm. now you you mentioned that right now you're, you're pretty busy. (laughs) You're pretty busy. So are you able to journal very much these days? Has that sort of fallen off? Cause it's kind of a, like a hobby extra thing. Oh, yeah. This conversation is really great for me right now because the answer is I can make time for it. I can make time for anything. Um, in the sense that this doesn't require a lot of brain power. I find, um, I just haven't made it a priority and I kind of, want to again. Um, I do have a journal beside my bed that I pick up from time to time and maybe I'll, like I just recently had um, an experience that I was like, you know what, I think I should write this out because just like you said, when you write it out, I find it's a cathartic or maybe I'm using that word too much, but like this experience where you decide and you realize like maybe that doesn't matter as much or it's not as important um, and it kind of gives you much more perspective. And because I, my life is so busy, like everyone's is so busy, my life is pretty busy. Um, it might be a really good idea to do that. I do do like sticky notes for like bra- brain dumping all around. I have those all around my place. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got like other colors if I need other post-it uh-huh. yeah, notes. Same. Yeah. yeah, different sizes. Um, yeah. So I've been using that. But I think having a dedicated journal, again, that's not for vacations. Because when I was in Greece, I, I did it. Uh, when I go around like you know other places I remember that it's an important part of my life but not right now and again for some reason when I have a partner I forget maybe because I brain dumped to them poor them (laughs) and not my journal yeah so that's maybe something I can practice yeah it'll help everybody out so (laughs) the one one cool thing that I did you mentioned travel a couple times I'm actually about to go on a trip next week. So I actually might start journaling like today, several days ahead of time, like to like ramp down and like start decompressing ahead of time. Mm, Good idea. And when I, I drove to Alaska with my parents three years ago now, and I was like, I'm going to journal every single day, which I did. So I got like a new um, journal and I have, you know, 30 days worth of stuff, which, I mean, I remember the broad strokes, but it was, I mean, I, I took six weeks off and we were out for 30 days on the drive and everything, but yeah, like the specifics and the details and the towns we were in, like, mm-hmm. I can't remember, but yep. I have it in the journal. I can like go and like kind of maybe remember, even like you said, if I just kind of, it was like just the facts of like what happened and where we went, I'm pretty sure like the feelings and some of the other, maybe even like the smells and like the other sensory pieces, like I may even remember. Now, do you go back and and read some of the journals or do you just have like shelves full of them? Yeah, I do. So I want to write a book one day. So some, I'm kind of in that Matthew McConaughey, like where they're all in a chest somewhere and I'm going to go into the woods and pull them all out and read them and write it about my life one time. Um, but for me, the ones I do go back to, and I actually I've gone back to several times, is my travel ones. So same for you, where I just jot down the day, maybe just some quick highlights of what we're doing if I don't feel like I need to put it all on paper. But I put the amount of money I spend every single day, where I spent it, and how much I spent. And so I have um, finance journals of my travels. I know one other person, we compare our finance journals. It's really <laughs> lame. Um, huh. And that is so cool. So also if like you wanted to go to Greece or somewhere, I can tell you exactly where I ate, how much it costs, what it looks like in this year. And that's something I love going back to. I don't care about going back to my emotions <laughs> <laughs> like, of like real life. I like to go back to my trips. That's interesting. 
my wife would love that. I'll have to tell her she would yeah. enjoy tracking those expenses and potentially sucking the fun out of every <laughs> everything we do. <laughs> um, hopefully she can't hear me, but. All right. No, and it's funny because to people like her and me, like you can say that. And my, my, I have someone who's, who said that to me, who traveled with me. They're like, oh my God, Amberly, this seems terrible. And I love it. <laughs> it's like, it feeds my soul when I'm sitting there at lunch and I'm like, oh, uh, Greek salad, 6.5 euros or like, oh, it's American dollars. Let's make sure we do this translation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, and, and it actually, I mean, I was making fun of you, but like thinking back yeah. to the Alaska trip, like it would be very cool. I mean, we did, I think I did some um, like post-trip budgeting. So I like, I, I do know, but I don't know like how granular, um, certain it was not that granular where it was like, yeah. we ate here, this is how much it costs. This is what I ordered, which I, I mean, you know, I think we both like yeah. food as well, but I would mm -hmm. love to remember the specific things that I ate and what yeah. I ordered. So, the, okay, I may do this. I'll get back to you and let you know how it went. Okay. Um, then I can make fun of you. <laughs> so, so <laughs> you mentioned that you maybe want to, you know, get back on the horse, start journaling again. Um, Maybe we can use this as somewhat uh, accountability. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you to it, but are you going to get, yeah. get started to uh, like start journaling again here? Yeah, because I have a journal. Um, as people, you might have this too, as a weirdly A-type personalities who are also very flexible. Um, you might have specific ways you like to, like the type of journal with the specific line heights that you like to have. I have that. <laughs> so I have one of those journals available to me right now. So yes, I am all prepared to start journaling. Very cool. All right. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely going to get something uh, going for this trip that I'm about to go yeah. on. I'll probably start today, like I said, to decompress. And I, I like that idea. And I'll see how it goes. Like I'm, I'm actually planning on taking quite a lot of time off this summer, going on hikes and other stuff like that. So it could be good to recap that and just have something to keep me busy that's actually like helpful versus, you know, some kind of random emails that I have to answer or something. So, yeah, it's really fun. Very cool. So, uh, do you have any quick tips for people that maybe want to get started journaling, but they don't know quite what to do? That, let's say they have a notebook already. Yeah. Then what? Well, I was going to say, don't like, don't fixate on the notebook. Like literally a blank piece of paper is sometimes my favorite thing to write on. Um, and then you can just compile them into a book, which is what I've done before. Um, the other thing is, is don't put any time limits or things that you need to get out, right? A lot of people think that if you're journaling, you have to be like really emotional or like you have to like talk about things. You can literally just say like, oh, today is great. I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, I did a podcast and like like two thumbs up, you know, it, just start with something because I think you start to get into what your voice is over time, not right away. And yeah. no one's going to look at this, only you. Yeah. Take the pressure off and, and just get moving with it. So very yeah. cool. All right. So people can find you, Amberly, at, at FinTalks and stuff like that. We'll put links yeah. up. A anything else you want to mention uh, where people can follow you? Yeah, just um, my name is everywhere in the sense that it's Amberly Grant. So A-M-B-E-R-L-Y-G-R-A-N-T on Instagram. My website is amberlygrant.com. You can check me out there. I love interacting with new people. So feel free to reach out and say hello. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Thanks for listening to the show. That was the Mile High Five podcast and I'm Doug Cunnington the balder host and Carl Jensen is the cool sexy one. If you dig the show, please do three things for us. Number one, tell a friend, a family member, an enemy about the show. We really don't care who you tell. Maybe forward them a specific show that you know that they will like. It's the single most helpful thing that you can do to spread the word. It's like giving us a virtual high five and uh, actually we don't give high fives in in person, so the virtual kind's pretty good and more importantly, your friend or family member or even your enemy will appreciate the fact that you were thinking of them. Number two, make sure you're following or subscribed on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, whatever you're using, and that way you won't miss a show. And number three, please leave us a rating and review. We read them on the show occasionally, and you might hear yours out there on an upcoming episode. Quick disclaimer. This show is not financial or legal advice. 
I'd actually be surprised if it sounded like it. It's really just for entertainment, and that's at least what we're hoping for. But seriously, get advice from professionals. Carl and I are just two guys with microphones that sit in my basement and talk. So we'll catch y'all next week.